with me now David Taylor of the Ulster Unionist Party. Uh, he's a, a sitting councillor in Newry and Mourne District Council, but will be going forward to uh, seek uh, your support in the council elections that's coming. And that council election will be for the new council, which is Newry, Mourne and Down. Isn't that right? That's correct. They yeah. keep calling it super council. I'm not going to call it super council, but it's a council full stop. That, that's correct. And it's Bro, the new, yeah. we've got to get used to the notion that we are swift, just as we got used to the notion of being Europeans, we've got to get used to the notion of being Newry, Mourn and Downs. And they're not so very different to us over there in Down. I know they eat raw meat coming in off the ocean <laughs> at our glass and they suck herring's blood and no, we're only joking, you're good and decent <laughs> people. The cultural, I suppose Down Patrick could be regarded as the the cultural heart of the the, the, the area, right. you know, the cathedral well, yeah. and Patrick and the crosses. and So this is uh, the last in our present series of election forums. Now it's a little bit early. Uh, it's at Fora or Forum. I think it's Fora. But anyway, it's the last in the series. We're a wee bit early, but we'll be coming back again closer to May. But for now, it's no bad thing. We've been letting people see some of the Sinn Féin people, some of the SDLP people, and now your good self from the Ulster Unionist Party. Why are you an Ulster Unionist politician? Well, I've, I've been involved with the Ulster Unionist Party uh, from a very young age, Rowan. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, actively, I would say, probably from 14 years of age. Really? Uh, and before that, I always had a keen interest in politics. You know, I always believed that the Northern the Ulster Unionist Party are, are the, the, the best party to deliver for the people of Northern Ireland. You know, I, I'm a committed unionist, yeah. and, I, and I've always saw the Ulster Unionist Party to be the most sensible party, and the party that will deliver for all the people of Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say for all the people of Northern Ireland, even for those who aspire to destroy Northern Ireland and become unified with the Republic of Ireland politically. Listen, I, I'm under no illusion that, that there's people out there with a different political ideology to myself. Mm. But, you know, we're in a situation in the Ulster Unionist Party where we will, and we always have, tried to endeavour to, to deliver for all the people, irrespective of their cultural, religious or political background. It's the, only, it's the civilised way forward, isn't it? It certainly is. Because if you're not doing that, you're, you're led back into the old, dark lands of all the awful violence that occurred. And nobody ever wants to go nobody back to that. Nobody wants to go you know, back to uh, that at all. the younger generation that have, didn't and haven't yeah. experienced that, mm. that, that type of, you know. Yeah, mind you, you, you know, there's different kinds of violence around these days. La over the weekend, that couple, 60 years of age, yeah. that lovely couple, uh, on the Restrever to Warren Point Road, yeah. that they were, there was a, uh, they were held in their home, locked up in the bathroom, and their money was taken, this, that, and the other. It's dreadful that people in our community are unsafe in their own homes. Unfortunately, there will always be some form of violence in our community or criminal activity that will cause you know, pain and hurt to people. And it's just now that we have a different type of uh, act that activity you know, in, yeah. in our midst. It's but, not good. You know, it's, it's not good at all. Yeah, we send our best wishes to the family this morning Certainly. who were affected by that over the weekend and we, we wish you a speedy recovery from the shock and awfulness of what you came through. Uh, one of the things we've been doing, do what will you be going forward on, first of all, uh, in, in May? What will be the key of your platform, well, your mandate? Uh, certainly to deliver uh, efficient and responsible local government. Mm. You know, uh, that would be one of the key issues. Mm. Uh, there's obviously local issues where you know uh, you have to concentrate on as well. But certainly the key thing would be to, to deliver key and uh, responsible. Deliver responsible and efficient government because there is concerns with regards to this RPA and the changes to local government. RPA. Well, the review of public administration, Re which review of public, well, which which has been the yep. the uh, remit under which local government has been reviewed. Mm. And we would certainly have very serious concerns and have expressed concern prior to this about the, the costs associated with these changes. Are you, are, are you up in arms or annoyed at all about the council's proposal to spend almost half a million, between half and a quarter of a million, on uh, revamping the council chamber up there uh, as we prepare to go into the new council? Well, I, I'm, I'm on record uh, as not supporting it. You know, yeah. uh, I, I felt it was unnecessary. You know, we're in a situation at the minute where uh, we should have been potentially looking at new headquarters yeah. uh, for this council. Yeah. Uh, and what, what you could find yourself in a situation where they could spend that type of money on revamping yeah. one room and yeah. then subsequently a year or two later 
have to spend but yeah, millions on yeah. new headquarters. It, to me, it just doesn't make doesn't any make sense. sense. Because you know? for goodness sake, up there, there's no guarantee that that council chamber mm. is going to have any part to play in the new council. No. And it's divisive. If they're yeah. going to go down the line, if they're going down the line of uh, alternating meetings between Downpatrick Patrick and yeah. Uri, yeah. that's defeating the purpose of a unified new council. Well, it certainly doesn't create any efficiency mm. or any savings. Mm. You know, as I said, there's already significant uh, concerns about the costs associated with this. In fact, we, we are estimating that rates could potentially <laughs> rise somewhere in the line of 20%. That's the the, 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 the pay for the, yeah. for the, for the and is it s signed and sealed now? It's definitely going to go ahead. It will, it'll go ahead at this stage. You know, certainly, the shadow government elections will go ahead in uh, yeah. on the twenty second of May. And despite the fact the legislation hasn't been fully implemented at, at this stage, I really don't envisage. Uh, and that's all for a year of shadow government. Yeah. And shadow government yes. means what? Newry will continue where it is yes. there yeah. with the newly elected people mm -hmm. uh, in May for the new council. Yeah. Sitting in Newry, yeah, as well as sitting, sitting in Dunpatrick, in, 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 in a shadow government. But yeah. sure, they could have doubled up yeah. on seats for the for the. It's only twelve, you know, twelve months. Yeah, it is. Well, it, I, th I think this is part of the problem. It, it, there's still so much uncertainty in, the, in 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 this, you know, change to local government. For instance, we don't even know the full extent of the powers that we'll we'll take on. Mm. Now there is a. You know, suggesting that you no know, central government will pass on some of its powers to local government, but the problem with that is they're not going to give us any further expenditure <laughs> uh, yeah. to, to cover that. You know, yeah, and so that again, making that's it easier for themselves, making it easier for themselves. Mm. You know, mm. uh, do they do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things, David, we've been talking about, and your colleague uh, Andy Moffat, mm. uh, who who would in many ways be your mentor. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Andy, a good man, uh, with John McArdle of the SDLP, another good man in here launching their campaign, the council campaign, for full or almost full or a, a greater percentage of funding for the Southern Area Hospice. Yeah. At the moment, government disgracefully gives one third of the operating costs of the Southern Area Hospice. Mm -hmm. Where are you on that? Well, I'm certainly fully supportive of that campaign. You know, the local community uh, in Newry and Moore and, and even wider afield you know, do great work in, in, in raising the money required you know, mm. uh, to keep the hospice going. You know, the hospice does vital work. You know, mm. we think everybody has been, you know, uh, at, at some time or other, had a yeah. family member that you know, has had the yeah. avail of the services, unfortunately, of the hospice. You know? Can you understand, David, can you understand the rationale that allows a health service within our government mm. to say, that's a very important area of activity, hospice. You're vital to our health service, but we're only going to give you one third yeah. of, uh, of the amount of money you need. What's the rationale that allowed that position to be set in concrete in the first place? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I find it difficult to explain because, you know, despite the fact that a considerable amount of money within uh, a, a, a North Ireland budget is spent on health, it's where the money has actually been spent within the health system, mm. I think, is a problem, and where the priorities actually lay. You know, for instance, even the cost of administration and things like that, to me, there's far too much money spent where it could be spent better on things like, for instance, the hospice. You yeah. know, because to, to pay one third, you know, for, for a service that is absolutely vital right. to the local community, mm. you know, it, it's just not, you know, it's not acceptable, mm. you know, yeah. and that's why it, it, it should be, you know, uh, full fund provided for services like that. You were, you were at a meeting this morning, you came here straight from the meeting, what yeah. were your concerns this morning? Well, it was just an issue regarding Camelot Lake. You know, it's Camelot Lake, like, what's yeah. happening at Camelot Lake? Well, it's, it's just uh, with the future development plans for Camelot uh -huh. Lake, and you know, with that, it's, really, really, it's really early in the stages, you know, so it's nothing really can give you much detail on no, at this stage. No. You know? And is it a you council know? proposal for it? Well, it would be a multi-agency proposal. Multi-agency yeah, one, yeah. 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 Okay, that's, that's the situation there. How long, you've been in politics, you were elected to council when? I was elected in May 2011. Yeah, you've, uh, you've, you've cut your teeth by now. So two and a half years, and I was also uh, employed, I have been employed with Danny Kennedy, MLA, for, yeah. uh, I think... Are you still with eight Danny? Eight and nine, I am. Yeah, yeah I give yeah. Danny my regards. I will, certainly. I was actually, yeah. I supported him here, because he was roundly castigated by the Narrowwater Bridge people mm. uh, in spending the money, in reallocating the money yeah. uh, to uh, upgrading the trains mm. service, and he, he was accused of exporting jobs from Northern Ireland. Mm. And I said at the time, uh, and I, I supported him, and I, I said it on this program, that Danny Kennedy did the only thing that Danny Kennedy could do. That was to ask his department to come up with alternative uses for the money so that it wouldn't be lost. 
And his department yeah. came up with this, and Danny Kennedy said, let it be. Yeah. And I, really that was a, uh, you know, the, they were kicking out, I believe, the narrow water bridge people, you were kicking out wrongly at Kennedy, because it wasn't, it wasn't Kennedy robbed you of the project. Mm. It was actually Louth Council robbed you for, of the contract for the way you, they, they actually costed it, created the bill of quantities from the plans and got it wrong. Yeah. So Danny Kennedy uh, is, is okay there. And, you know, uh, he, was, he, he made it clear to me long ago that he was opposed to the bridge, mm. but that he would do everything he was legally required to do to make sure it got its run. Yeah, yeah. So maybe the next time round, mm. Danny will look, maybe, supporting it. Look at it in a bit more detail. Well, I think we're almost like, I suppose we don't get into too big of an, an argument with regards to our water bridge, because it, it is where it is at this stage. It is. Mm. But there has been attempts by you know political parties and, and others to try and pin the blame on one individual or another. Uh, but there has been a big you know uh, part, on, uh, particularly even in terms of the Irish government's role. Mm. Uh, in terms oh, sure, of, they backed uh, out uh, too. They, they ran out. away. But, but unfortunately, in well elements within the political system have refused to, to admit that. <laughs> You know, so uh, explain us the nose in your face. You know, you were speaking, they got promises out of Enda Kenny. Well, and Kenny, Kennedy unfortunately, uh, certain, you know, uh, you would have had ministers within the Irish government. One was telling you one thing. Oh, yeah. And one was telling you another, you know. Yeah. So. Well, so the people who suffered were the people of the Narrow Water Bridge Committee, the people of our areas, yeah. the people of uh, Down and Mourne and Dow and Newry and the people of Louth. And that would be, have you any sort of philosophical objection to a, a link being built between uh, Down and Louth. Does it, does it, what I'm saying no. is, and you know what I'm saying, I don't people think it, I don't, say I don't you're think a unionist it, yes. and you don't want Listen, any more infrastructure. There, there would have been concerns, you know, and people would have said, and maybe even uh, those of a nationalist and Republican persuasion didn't help allay them fears by saying, you know, they tried to portray it as this is bringing the two countries closer together and this will bring it closer to United Ireland. I never believed that was the case. A bridge doesn't yeah. do that. You know, no, it doesn't. You know, that, that's not the case. People's hearts do yes, that. People's hearts and minds bridge do that. Bridge doesn't do it. Hearts and minds do that yeah. type of thing. You know, but I was never that sure. Uh, my concerns would have been about the economic argument for it. Yeah. And was it actually going to bring the, the, the tourist you know, benefits that people were that hoping, people were hoping yeah. for? You know? yeah. Yeah. And to justify that co significant cost that was associated mm. with it. Mm. So from that point of view, that's where my concerns yeah. lay, not yeah. with any sort of political ideology. So a, be a better, more detailed cost-benefit yeah. analysis would have helped Certainly. you. Yeah. yeah. It, now, the news today, the council has stamped and given the OK uh, at committee level to the Carlingford Lock Ferry between Greencastle and Green Ore. Okay. Where are you on that? Well, it is, we, we've, we've been, you know, fairly uh, supportive of that project. We haven't, you know, I know there has been concerns, I think, along the line from local uh, local residents uh, uh, but you know by and large I've been you know certainly been happy enough to support the project yeah that's, yeah. that's good that's good so uh, any what what, are the, what has been the, the high point of your political two years well I suppose I am uh, this year I'm serving as deputy mayor uh, wow, and yeah. that's you know that was a that's a big achievement for someone you know for, but you're never going to be mayor that's that's probably the reality of it yeah you know? And how does, uh, aren't you a power sharing council? Well, well that, that's where, you know, th there would be difficulties for me in that, you know, whilst it is a, you know, it, it's an achievement and it's an honour to represent the people mm. of Newry and Mourne as their deputy mayor, uh, the reality is there hasn't been a, a unionist first citizen for almost a decade now. Yeah. You know? Well, are you not, are you not bolstering that system? by agreeing to be part of it. Should you not say, I wish to make a protest here, it's been a decade since a unionist was mayor of Newry and Mourne, and I'm protesting that that's not right. I'm not a politician, well, but I see I know, it as I not know, being right. No, but listen, we, we have raised it year on year, certainly from the, the two and a half years that I've been yeah. in council, we know each year when there has been a, a, a first citizen elected, we've always raised this point about the fact that there hasn't been a unionist first citizen. Yeah. For see, a, to, to my way of thinking, it shows a lack of gener First of all, a lack of generosity in the majority parties, yeah. a lack of generosity, uh, and an unwillingness to recognise the Nuryism yeah. and the right of citizenry mm -hmm. to a unionist population. Yeah. That's, that's not good enough. Well, certainly, we, 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 the unionist population per se make up approximately 20% of the, the population of Nuryam. Of Nuryam Ward, yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, and, and as such, you know, they, you know, if we're going to be genuine about power sharing, and we, we find ourselves in a power sharing you know, government in the, in, in, in the Northern Ireland Assembly. And at local government level, if we're to have that same form of power sharing, it, it has to be fully inclusive and genuine for it to be real. When's uh, it going to change, do you think? <laughs> the, the will, it has to be, there has to be a will there amongst the political mm -hmm. parties. But these know. are all good people. Yeah. You know, I've met, I know Pat McGinn. Mm. 
I know Sean Rogers. I I know uh, I know John uh, John uh, 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 John the the, the he's the man who does the nursing. John oh, John McCardle. John McCardle. Yeah, yeah, that's a senior moment for yeah. you. you can, uh, there's lots of support for people with senior <laughs> moments, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, the special research done in senior <laughs> moments, please. Yeah. But John McCardle, decent, yeah. good human being. You know, M Michael Ryan, the mayor, decent, good human being. Well, I think, Rowan, you find yourself in a situation probably, and this is a, the nature of those peop uh, of people involved in politics sometimes, where uh, when they have the power <laughs> at their hands from that point of view, they don't like giving it that away. Well, that means know? that everything I have said about them yeah. is untrue. They're not decent people. Well, listen, from if, a, on, if a the one, strong, on a one-to-one one one basis... If the strong is always going yeah. to keep the small yeah. down, yeah. 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 then they're not decent. On a one-to-one one basis, you know, certainly they're, they're very, you can get on very well. I have mm -hmm. good relationships with, with, with a lot of the councillors up there. But certainly from the point of view of, you know, whenever it comes to the political aspect of it, mm. uh, and, and, and it may not just come from a local level, there may be you know, influences from a central level to say, well, listen, we need you to take that part, because yeah. that part gives you the profile and the coverage that you know, allows us as a party to move but forward. But the great you know? thing it would do, if I saw unionist, nationalist, broad terms, alternating the, the, the mayor, mayoral yeah. responsibility yeah. on a year-to-year -year basis, mm. I would say, that's such a good council. That's a council that's meaningful. That's important. Yeah. I'm proud of that council. Yeah. But I can't say I'm proud of what I see. Well, it would certainly create uh, a lot better of an environment for community relations if that, uh, if that did happen. You know, people, particularly from a unionist perception, would at least see then that their, 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 their political ide ideology has been recognised, that they as a community have been recognised yeah. yeah. by the council and by the, you know, by the people. It'll change, of course, in the new council, wouldn't but, you think? Well, the, the, the hunt process is, 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 it has been suggested as a new format for you know, selecting. You know, and and the, the hunt principle is used up in Uri Warren, but again, sometimes it's based on political party strength, mm. which means you know, that you, know, you, you could miss out on, on positions. And I think there needs to be a... It, it needs to be almost a... It, it needs to be a will there and a, a gentleman's agreement, so to speak, that yeah. you know, there would be that genuine... Uh, checking my call because it just okay. could be the it could be the the prime minister. It's not. <laughs> so you're okay. okay. Oh God is. Oh, it's Nick. Nick. No, I've got him with me. David's here. Yeah. You want to see him over at Downing Street when? In Nobleman. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah. indeed thank for you, coming Rob. in. You're okay. a good man. Thank you. You're in Uri High man. I am. Yes. Good man. I'm proud God of it. Some <laughs> music, sir. Okay. Thank you.